one, you have to not know sigma. Because if you knew sigma, there's a better way to do it. There's a more accurate way to do it. You with me on that? If you know sigma, you're using z-score. Because why? Hey, it, it's more accurate. You're going to get a better range of numbers. We just found out that t's are wider than z's. What would you rather have, a narrow range or a wide range? Narrow. narrow. You want to be more accurate. So if you had sigma, why are you using t? You're not going to do that. If you don't know sigma, you're left to only having a, this is your option. That's it, just t. So we're going to check those requirements. Sigma is not going to be known. The next thing you do is find your, t, your uh, degrees of freedom because you're going to use that to find your t-critical value. So one, requirements. Two, you're going to look up for your degrees of freedom. Three, that's going to let you find your t. And once you find your t, you're home free. You got E, you got your, your common symbol. Would you guys like to do an example? You don't look so excited about the example. Oh, you're hurting my heart. This should be fun. We're, we're almost done with our class. We should be excited about every last example. There's not many left. <laughs> we're going to construct a 95% confidence interval for the age, for the average age of people denied a promotion. You see these people, uh, they were there in this business, and this company would, would always promote young people, but not old people, because they figured, well, they're going to go away anyway, so we don't promote them. So they were just promoting young people. And so these, these people would file a lawsuit and said, hey, you're, you're being ageist here. You know, we have just some amount of qualifications. Why are you not promoting us? So this is, this is where that comes from. So we're going to construct a 95% common set interval to find out the average age of people denied a promotion from this, this company, OK? And here was the information they got. In a random sample, of 23 people, the average age was 47.0 with a standard deviation of Construct a 95% common interval for the average age of people to that promotion. The sample, 23 people. Average age was 47 with a standard deviation of 7.2. Assume this sample comes from a population that's normally distributed. Let's go ahead and let's see what we can do, what we can use. Firstly, can you tell me what my, let me use a different color here, what my N is? What is my N, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? 23. 23? 23? Mm -hmm. Yes, 23. Absolutely. Hopefully 23. From my N, can you tell me my degrees of freedom? Remember, N does not equal degrees of freedom. So N, N is different than degrees of freedom. It's, it's actually different by exactly one all the time. What is my degrees of freedom then? 22. In fact, we just did that on the board. 22. OK, now can you tell me, do I have an X bar? Do I have an X bar or do I have a mu? You have an X bar. 
Where's it coming from? Is this average age from a sample or the population? Am I going to tell you the population for a, standard, for a compass interval? No, that's what we're trying to estimate. I mean, why would I tell you, hey, the mean age is 47 for the population? You wouldn't even have to do this, right? You're like, oh yeah, I know, it's 47, great. No, we're not going to do that. That'd be a waste of time. So the sample mean is 47. Here's the big one, okay? This is going to tell you what to do. I need to be ultra clear on this. You're going to look right here because it's always going to give you a standard deviation. Always. Unless you're dealing with the proportion, remember we're in the second half of this. First half was proportions, you only do one thing. What do you use for proportions? A Z or a T? Z, Z no matter what. That's proportions. You, you just use Z. Over here in means, we have two scenarios. We have Z's and we have T's. It all is based around this statement. Everything else could be worded exactly the same. But this statement right here is going to tell you whether you're using a Z or whether you're using a T. That's it. So in this statement, is this a population standard deviation or a sample standard deviation? In other words, is this a sigma or is this an S? And that's what you've got to know. If it's a sigma, you're going to be using which one, a Z or a T? Z. Z. If it's an S, if it's a sample standard deviation, you're going to be using a... Z. That's it. If you can manage that, these compensation intervals are, are pretty easy, right? But I mean, the math is not hard on them. If you can manage that, then you can manage doing the test just fine because you're going to get a whole lot of confidence intervals on your test, at least four, at least four confidence intervals. So if you can tell the difference between sigma and S, population standard deviation and sample, by reading the problem, you'll be just fine. If you can't, you're, you're going to mess up. You're going to do a Z when you should have a T or a T when you should have a Z, and it's going to crazy on you, right? So let's read real careful. It says, in a, a random, <coughs> random sample, random sample for 23 people, the average age was 47. That's where we get our x bar. With a, with a, what's the with a mean? It says, in relation to that sample that I'm taking right there, in relation to the sample, it was 7.2. Is that a sigma or an s? s. Definitely an s. A sigma would have said this. It would have said, assume the population standard deviation is. You, you hear the difference there? It'll say population standard deviation somewhere. It will sp specify it for you. It's not going to leave you in the dark. Okay, if it's population standard deviation, it will tell you that. If you don't have that, it's sample. You follow? Okay, that's that's the whole idea here. So here we have not a sigma. Sigma, you go nope, no sigma. There is no population standard deviation even said anywhere in this problem. We have an S. S is 7.2. By the way, can we even use a T-score? Are the requirements met? We should be checking that. Firstly, do I have a random sample? Yeah. Boom, got it, random sample. Um, the second thing was, is my sample size greater than 30? No, no. Oh, no. So can I use it? Yes. Why? Comes from a population that's normally distributed. That's great. That's exactly what I need to see. Lastly, I would check to see if my sigma is known or unknown. If my sigma is known, I would be using a Z distribution for a critical value. Is my sigma known? No. no, my S is known. My sample is innovation. That means I'm using a T. So we're going to go ahead and continue this thing. We've already found the degrees of freedom. We've already done all this nice stuff. We're going to go ahead and continue to find our alpha and our T critical value. What is our... What's our alpha here, folks? Our alpha. 0.05. Cool. We now should have enough between these two things to find our critical value. We, we've already done this one on the board, but take some time, go through it again. Look at your table right now. Look up your degrees of freedom, which should be 22. Look over to the appropriate column. In this case, you have the 0 0.05 for your alpha. That's why I had you write that on the table, right? So you just follow that. What is your T alpha over 2, please? Yeah, we, we just did that example in, in class, but we get the same information right here. After you find that, man, you, you're set. I mean, you've got the T critical value. You've got your S. You've got your N. Now it's time to find your E. So I'd like you to do that now.
Oh, one thing, one thing. Please watch this very carefully. You'll be close if you mess this up, but you won't be exact. I'll be looking for it. When you're doing the N, should I use 22 or 23? 23. 23. N's 23, degrees of freedom is 22. You use the degrees of freedom to find this one, but go back to your end for that one. This should be 23. Did you find it? Did you find it? How much did you get? 3.114. Anybody else get 3.114? Yes? Is it okay that that's greater than 1? We're not dealing with proportions anymore, so it doesn't really matter. Let's say it again. 3.1. Let's just say 3.11. Okay, that's okay because look at our mean is in tenths. Let's leave it in. We can actually leave it in tenths if you want to for our e. That's fine. Because we're not dealing with the proportions, we don't need to go to like the third or fourth decimal place. That would be important because we're talking about percentages there. Here we're talking about years. 3.1 years is going to be just fine enough for us. We don't need 3.114 years. That would be like almost an hour. So okay, we don't care. Uh, we want 3.1 years. Give it to me. Same as your average is given. You follow? Okay, cool. What do I do with that e? Put now. Interval. Make up my interval. Go ahead and do that now. Okay, so we should be taking x bar minus e, wrapping that thing around a mu, that's our population mean that we're trying to estimate here, x bar plus e. So we have our x bar that should be given to you already. That's going to be explicitly stated somewhere. You're not going to have to find it. We would have 47.0 minus 3.1. That's going to be less than our mu, which is less than 47.0 plus 3.1. So this is going to give us a range in years. Right here, you should get, well, what is that, 43.9? And 50.1? Now comes for the interpretation. Hopefully, you have this thing interpreted in your mind, because we use the same interpretation now for at least three weeks, right? 